so great to have you all here. And also if you're watching slash listening after, um, welcome. Um, well, apparently this is a topic that a lot of people are interested in. Um, so let's, let's get into it. Um, this really came, uh, today I want to talk about how to increase the profitability of your Pilates business. So whether you already have a Pilates business, whether you're thinking about having a Pilates business, um, I want to, I, I hope this will be of help to you. Uh, and the reason I wanted to share this topic today is, uh, because we've basically had a deluge of questions about it. Um, and particularly in light of what we talked about last week about instructor pay, I've had a lot of, um, a lot of studio owners basically saying like, yeah, that's all great and good and everything. And we pay instructors high pay, but it's like, well, we don't have enough money to pay them high pay. So <laughs> how, do, how do we, how do we, how do we either hire cheap ass instructors or um, have a more profitable business so that we can afford to pay high, high pay and attract the instructors that we want to attract. So um, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. So, um, and just a, like a super brief, like, how do I, how do I know what the heck I'm talking about here? Um, uh, I started a Pilates studio in Melbourne in 2007 called Breathe Wellbeing and, uh, with some partners and ran that studio for a decade until 2016 and went, so when we started, it didn't exist. You know, we walked in, it was an empty building. We renovated it. We did the whole thing. Uh, when when I left, when I sold out to my partners in 2016, the revenue for that studio was uh, 2.4 million dollars per year. Um, so we built it up quite a bit, um, and so then I started Breathe Education in 2016 um, with uh, like two part-time team members that joined me from the studio. And currently, this year, Breathe Education's revenue is sitting somewhere between five and six million dollars. So I've built a couple of seven figure Pilates businesses. Um, so I, I feel like I've learned a few things over the year. I've made some horrible mistakes and lost heaps of money and done some really stupid things. And, uh, gradually over time with some great mentors and lots of reading and self-education and lots of painful, expensive lessons, I've learned <laughs> some of the things to do and some of the things to not do <laughs> to increase the profitability of a Pilates business. So, uh, I wanted to share that with, with, with you today. Um, now, probably I don't think I'll be able to share everything I've learned in the last 15 years, but I could probably, I'm pretty, pretty sure I, I'll be able to add some value um, for all of you. Now, what I, what I actually want to do today is a bit of a case study, um, at least to start the session and then have a discussion. Um, and so I want to do a case study on uh, a studio in uh, here in Australia in a rural town, um, two hours away out of Melbourne, where I live, a town called Mansfield, which is a tiny town population of about four and a half thousand souls. Um, and it's at the foot of the, the Victorian Alps. Um, we call them the Alps. They're not, <laughs> they're about one tenth as big as the Swiss Alps. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so it's, a, it's just quite a small country town. Um, and there's a studio there run by Cherie Worthington, who is a Breathe um, alum. And uh, she was one of the horde of people who sent in questions about, um, and Cherie, I see you on the call. That's awesome. So with Cherie's permission, um, we're going to look at her um, business and see what we can do to, you know, what suggestions I can make to hopefully add some value to that. So uh, I'm going to actually share my screen, have a look at Cherie's website. So um, what I see here is firstly, I want to say, this is a freaking awesome website. I really love this website. Um, and there's not a lot I would add or change to this website. I think it's fantastic. What do I like about it? It's got straight away, the first thing I see, or almost the first thing I see, is this book a class button, right? It's like, okay, if you're new here, here's what you do. So I love that. I love that you're in, you've got a really well-defined intro offer. I love the price point of it. It's not too cheap. So you're not going to get a bunch of people who just want anything that's cheap slash free. You're going to get people who are genuinely interested in, in doing Pilates uh, and they just want an easy entry point where they can dip their toe in the water without committing to a 10 pass or a monthly membership. You know, they just want to give it a go. So I think that's awesome. Um, I love I love the way it's set out. It's really 
easy. It's obvious what I do. If I'm a beginner, I click on this button. The only thing that I would change about basically about this whole website is I would put that button above the fold. And by above the fold, I just mean visible without scrolling, right? So when I land on this page, I would have that button like there where the plant is and I would have it really big. So even if I'm on a mobile phone or whatever, like if I look at this on a mobile, I'm not sure how I'm going to resize my screen. I'm not sure how that carries over to the zoom window. But if, if it's, if I resize the screen, like I really have to scroll a lot before I get to that button. So I would just put that button right at the top of the page. So it doesn't matter what device I'm on. Um, you know, when I land on that page, uh, the first thing I see is book a class, but you know, I, I, th I don't think that's a game changer. I think it's a 10 percenter or even a 5 percenter. Um, but really this website is awesome. It's got everything I want to know. It's clean. It's, it's the, the visuals are fantastic. It represents who you are and what you're about. It's got your prices. It's got all of the class class times I can book right here from the website. It's, you know, it's, I think it's a fantastic website. And, uh, if you've got a Pilates studio and you, uh, not sure if your website's awesome, I would say, look at this website and, uh, copy a lot of what, what Cherie's done. So, um, yeah, so that's my, my 10 cents on the website. Um, and, but so, so then kind of just zooming out and, and really I haven't talked to Cherie about any of this detail, right? So all I'm, all I'm sharing with you is stuff that I've learned off the website, basically. So a lot of my guesses might be a little bit off. Um, and Cherie, you know, feel free to jump in and tell me anything I'm, I'm incorrect on. So the first thing I did was I looked at the prices because, uh, I've had a lot of questions from regional people actually in, in Australia and the US saying like, oh, well, I'm in a small town and I can't afford to charge those prices, what the big city studios charge. Um, so how can I make a profit? And I was like, I looked here and I was like, very pleasantly surprised that Cherie's prices are in fact what I would consider big city prices. I think they're, they're good prices. I don't think that's, I don't think that's ch too cheap. Um, so Cherie, I've got nothing to add here. Um, to your prices. Eight classes a month is $52 a week. So that is $200 a month for eight classes. So that it will $208 a month for eight classes. So what's that? 20, is it $26 a class roughly on a membership? Um, so, and that to me, that's, that's fairly similar to what you pay in the big city. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, uh, and I'll, sorry, I also like the way you've got different levels of membership for different numbers of classes that you that, that people might want to consume right so if you just have unlimited what we know is typically you know most people will come to like two ish classes per week right so you sell unlimited but then there is always those one or two people who come to 10 classes a week right and and in a small studio where you've only got limited number of beds um, you know, those two people coming to 10 classes a week each, they eat up a significant fraction of your capacity. So you want to make sure that if those people love it that much, that they're coming to 10 classes a week, that they're, they are actually your best customers, not your worst customers. You know, the best customers in the sense that they're paying you for all of those sessions. They're not getting them for $3.50 a session. So I like the fact that your, your unlimited membership is significantly more expensive than your, um, you know, to a week membership, basically. Um, I love the fact that you've got class packs here um, because not everyone's going to want to buy a membership. Maybe I don't want to lock into a membership. I feel, you know, uncomfortable about that. So I can buy 10 classes. I can buy five. I can just buy one. Um, I like the, this is $26 per class. And if I'm coming to, if I'm on this membership and I just did a rough calculation and said it's $26 a class, but if you actually think of, a month is, is 4.33 weeks, right? Yeah, a month is not exactly four weeks. So if you think of a month as 44.33 weeks, this actually works out to a little bit less than $26 a class. I think it's 25 or something a class. And Cherie, feel free to correct me if I'm getting any of the math wrong. Um, so I love that because that means that if I'm coming basically once a week, right, this is the cheapest option. Right. But if I'm coming like more than once a week, basically I'm coming twice a week, this becomes the cheapest option. And so that becomes a really easy kind of upgrade path for clients. Right. So I really like the way that your pricing is structured. That, that, you know, it's like if I, if I don't want to commit at all, I can just buy a one off. 
And then if I'm ready to commit a little bit, I can buy 10 classes and save a bit of money. And if I find I'm coming twice a week, I can upgrade to this membership and I save a tiny bit more, but not it's not too generous as well, which I love. All right. So I love all of that. Here's where I'm uh, that's that's all good. Here's where I'm I'm less enthusiastic about your pricing, which is the duets and the small groups. Um, and we'll talk about that in a sec. All right. And I love the fact that you're doing online as well. I think that's freaking awesome. Um, I noticed that you've they're all pre-recorded. And I'm not sure I, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on talking about that today, but I just wanted to flag that uh I don't know how that's going for you. We haven't talked about it, but um, our experience at Breathe is that people seem to value the fact that our classes are live and recorded. Um, so a lot of people watch the recordings afterwards, but there seems to be some kind of intangible value that people attach to things when they're delivered live and then you can watch them afterwards. But it's kind of like there's, there's more banter and stuff when it happens live. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to flag that, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a big thing. I think it's, it's it's a again it's a five percenter so well, now i want to talk about the like game changes like the things that uh i think could double or even possibly quadruple your profit uh, and again i don't i'm not privy to any of sheree's numbers i don't know what her costs are i don't know what her profit is i'm just looking at this like you you guys on the call know as much about sheree's business as i do at this point i'm just standing from the outsider's perspective. All right. So what I see here, are all those prices here. Now, when I look at the timetable, um, which is, oh, so sorry. Before I looked at the timetable, I looked at the classes, all right? And I saw, okay, group reformer, one-on-one -on -one small group. Okay. So group reformer, my first question in my mind is like, how many in a group, right? And I scrolled through here and I think it said somewhere like eight. It said it somewhere. Um, can't remember where it said it, but there it said maximum eight per class. All right. So that's right. So that the reason I'm interested in how many per class is, well, if you're charging $26 per person and you've got eight per class, well, that tells you how much your maximum revenue is per session, right? If the class is full, you can make eight times 26, which is $208 or something like that. Um, am I going too fast for you guys? Is this is this all making sense? Do you have, you're okay with this? All right. Stop me if you've got a question at any point or if I'm talking too fast, you know, just put something in the chat or unmute and ask away. All right. So, all right. So that tells me about, because I'm interested in this from a business design perspective, right? So I'm, I'm not, today I'm not really interested in talking about the Pilates teaching or the anatomy or any of that stuff. I'm really interested in like, okay, how do we turn this into as profitable a business as profit possible, as possible? Um, all right, so eight per class at $26 per person. That tells me what the revenue is from that class potentially. And now if we if we look at those other classes, I'm thinking, all right, so how many people in one of those other classes? Um, small group. Small group, I think had a maximum of four, one to four people per class. Okay, small group, and they're $45 per session, roughly, depending on which pack you buy. So uh, that's that tells us how much money we can make from that class. And then we've got a duet class, which is uh, on the timetable, which is all, obviously it's a two, um, uh, two people. Um, let me see if I can get rid of that. There you go. All right. So now we look at the timetable, the schedule. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's what's the, the, the revenue generating capacity of this business, right? Actually, let me let me just back up a step. Let me just back up a step. If if you want to increase, if you want to increase profits, well, you got you can do two one or two things, right? So increase profit. It's real simple, right? You can either decrease your costs or increase your revenue. Now, it's actually not either. You could do both, right? 
or you could increase your revenue and increase your costs, but increase your revenue by more, right? So there's lots of ways that you could do it, but this is, this is your basic formula for increasing profit, right? And I have to tell you that in almost all situations, right, I would default default to increasing revenue, right? That is my default. Now, I'm not saying never cut costs. Cutting costs has its time and place, right? But you can only cut your costs so far, right? I mean, if you ask everyone in the business to take a 20% pay cut, what do you save off your total expenses? You don't save 20% because wages is not your only cost. You might save 10% off your total costs, right? If you then negotiate with your landlord to get a lower rent and you then buy home brand toilet paper, you know, for the toilets and, and you know, do the bookkeeping and the cleaning yourself and all of that stuff, how much are you going to save off your total expenses? Maybe 20%, right? Whereas if you can double, you can easily double your revenue. It's actually easier to double your revenue than it is to save 20% off your costs, right? So I would go for increasing revenue every day of the week, asterisk, you know, there is there are some situations where it's good to cut costs. Like if we're in a global pandemic and your business is closing, what, you know, sure, there is a place for cutting costs, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're not here to talk about surviving through hard times. We're talk, here to talk about how you maximize profitability of your business. And the way to do that is to have a mentality of how do I maximize revenue without maximizing costs? Right. But having said that, even if you if if your if your costs are fifty dollars and your revenue is a hundred dollars, right? Well, if you double your revenue and double your costs, we've also doubled your profit, right? Because at fifty dollars cost and a hundred dollars revenue, you got fifty dollars of profit. Right. But if you double both of those, now you've got a hundred dollars of costs and two hundred dollars of revenue, we well, now you got a hundred dollars of profit, right? So even if you double your revenue, even if doing that causes you to double your costs you're still ahead, right? So the name of the game is not always decreasing costs. It's decreasing costs as a percentage of revenue. Does that kind of make sense? Anyone got a different view? All right. So we're, I'm looking at this website now with my, my thinking cap on or the glasses that I'm looking through are, how do we maximize revenue, right? How do we maximize revenue? All right, well, the, so the first thing I look at is the pricing and I see, okay, the pricing's not bad. The pricing's pretty good. Intro offer, smooth, you know, 26 bucks a class, that's good pricing, right? I, I wouldn't, my advice wouldn't be increase your prices here. I think those are good prices. Uh, then the next thing I look at is how many people are you putting in each session? I could probably just look at this photo and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there are eight reformers in there. Okay. Well, that's how many people you can put in the session. Eight times 26 is how much revenue you can generate. All right. Um, now, when I look at this timetable here, and I, and I count the classes, and I actually went through, and there's a, you, there's a really cool thing that you can download it at the bottom here somewhere. Download class schedule. So I clicked on that and it showed me the weekly schedule, right? And I just literally went through and went counting the reformer classes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Why am I counting the reformer classes, do you think? What are you saying, Amanda? I can see you saying it. Um, I would just imagine that they would be the profitable ones that they would fill up. Right. I'm figuring out, okay, if I can get eight people paying 26 bucks each into a reformer studio, how many times in the week do I do that? Right. And that tells me about my revenue generating engine here. All right. So anyway, I'll save you the, the boredom of going through and counting all those because I did it before. And I'm pretty sure there are 22 of them. Okay, 22 reformer classes of very, you know, some of them are cardio, some of them are open, some of them are foundations, but, but you know, they're all 22 reformer classes. All right. And so if we do some super quick math, right, we find out that 22 reformer classes uh, times eight people times $26 
okay, equals some number, 22 times 8 times 26 equals $4,576. That would be weekly revenue, you know, maximum weekly revenue from those reformer classes. But as anybody who's ever taught Pilates knows, all of your classes aren't full all the time, <laughs> right? So that's not, that's not going to be your actual revenue, right? So your actual revenue, now I don't know, uh, you know, what your um, utilization capacity is, Sheree. I looked through your timetable and I saw a few classes are waitlisted, which is awesome. So that tells me that you're, you know, you're, you're fairly busy. Um, uh, my experience and, and what I've heard from others as well is that around 80% utilization is the maximum that you can uh, generally, you know, sustain. Because when you get to more than 80%, what that means is you, you've you got long wait lists for every class, right? Because there are always people who cancel at last minute or whatever. And to get above 80%, you have to have long wait lists. And when every class is waitlisted, guess what? People get pissed off <laughs> and they cancel their memberships, <laughs> right? So that drops you below your 80% and then it builds up towards 80% and then people get pissed off and cancel their memberships. So it ends up stabilizing, in my experience, around about eight, the 80% mark, right? It might be 85 if you're super organized, it might be 75, but you know, it's around about 80%. Has you got, you know, a lot of you guys on the call have studios. Does that, does that number sound about right to you? Or is anyone who's got a different number that you found to be like the, the maximum sustainable, um, you know, utilization percentage? Sounds about right. And, and if you're feeling bashful and don't want to verbalize, feel free to just add in the, add in, you know, type it into the chat. Any, any questions or, or input. All right. So if we're back to here and we go, okay, well, that's, that's the maximum possible revenue. But in reality, what we have to do is times that by 0 0.8, or in other words, 80%, right? And, and that would be the maximum actual revenue that you would expect, right? So with my trusty iPhone calculator, um, times 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.8, whoops, um, Four seven. Oh God! <laughs> Someone help me out, please. <laughs> four five seven six times point eight equals four five seven six times point eight equals three six six zero. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jordana. Equals three six six zero. I'm just learning something about myself. I'm not very good at using a calculator and uh, talking at the same time. <laughs> All right. So that's your, that's your, um, you know, if you fill all of those classes, right? By fill, I mean you've basically got a wait list on all of them. I would expect the average utilization to be about eighty percent. So on eight, in other words, on eight reformers, right? I would expect your average number of people in the class to be six point four, right? Which is eighty percent of eight, right? Obviously, there's not going to be a class where you've got actually six point four people in it, but over the week it'll average out, right? Um, and that would be if all of your classes are waitlisted, right? Or if the majority are waitlisted. I don't know if that's the case or not. So anyway, so so that would be your revenue per week, right? Um, and now if we think about the, the small groups, right? Well, I went through and I counted the small groups and I thought, okay, how many of them are? And it turns out there are eight, by my count anyway, okay, and at there's maximum of four people in a small group, okay, and we're charging $49 per person, roughly, depending on which pack they buy, but let's say so it's average of that, okay, but then, of course, we have to multiply it by 80% because we can't expect to have four people in every small group. We expect to have more like 3.2 people in every small group, right? So then we uh, we end up with, uh, and I did this before, hopefully I did it right, we end up with $1,256 in revenue. Did, that, did I do that right or not? Better do it again. Eight times four times 49 times 0.8. One, two, five, four. All right, pretty close. All right, so 1256 in revenue. And then we come to the duets, right? So that's a small group. 
Then we come to the duets, right, which is two people. And the price for the duet was, uh, oh, no, maybe it was the duet that was 49 Cherie, can you help me out on the pricing here? Um, yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, duets are 55, um, small group 40. Uh, 40. Okay. Glad you're on the call because I would have got the wrong numbers. All right. So that number is going to be a little bit different, but it will be still be similar. Eight times four times 40 times 0.8 equals one, one, oh, two, four. Okay. Um, and then duets are 55 and I believe you've got nine duets on the, um, timetable and obviously two people in each one and then times 0.8 is going to equal uh, nine times oh thanks Jordana 396 is that, that sounds a bit low nine times 55 times two times 0.8 792 I get am I, am I missing something all right, good. Three, yeah, three, three ninety six sounded a bit low. It's seven ninety two. Um, all right. So now, what did we say for the reformer? We said it was three six six zero. Okay. Now, remember, we've got twenty two reformers, right? And we've we've only got you know eight or nine of the other ones. Okay. But you can already see that where the where the revenue engine in the business is. Right, and so if you would if you were to double your reformer classes versus doubling your small groups, right, you can see how much difference that would make. Or versus, you know, forget about doubling the duets; that would do almost nothing, right, except make you work twice as hard for the same amount of money. So, all right. So now I want to just sort of go through and and think about this from a uh, from a profit per class um, from a profit perspective. Right. So if we've got a, um, and please, you know, anyone jump in if, if the math gets confusing or, you know, you have a question or a you know, different view of this. So basically for a reformer, If our revenue per, let's think about it on a per class basis, right? We've got eight people at $26. And that it's actually not going to be eight people. It's going to be 6.4 people, right? At $26 on average, okay? Um, per class, okay? Which is going to equal whatever it equals. 6.4 times 26 equals $166, right? So that's my expected revenue per class, assuming I can fill all the classes, right? Um, and now out of that, I've got to pay my, I've got to pay two things. I've got to pay the, my cost of sales. Okay. Sometimes it's called, it's sometimes it's called cost of goods sold is another word, another way of putting it, but because we're not selling goods, we just call it cost of sales. And then I've got to pay my fixed costs. And then, of course, I've got to have some profit. Okay. And all of that has got to come out of that $166. Right. Now, so what's the cost? The cost of sales in, in any business is what it costs you to make that sale right? So if I run that class, there's a cost to running the class. Whereas if I don't run the class, I save some money, right? What do I save money on if I don't run the class? Genuine question. What's your answer? How do I save money by not running the class? What do I get to not spend money on? One instructor, you don't have instructor. to. Instructor, right. That's the main cost, right? Unless you're running a receptionist or a you know, some other thing, right? It's, it's mainly the instructor, right? So that's, you know, AKA, right? The instructor. Um, right, so. Raf, 
Yeah. Did you, did you remove the taxes from your revenue? Because it's not actually the actual revenue you're getting. Like- well, your tax comes off the profit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 you know, of course, you want to m- minimize the tax that you're legally obliged to pay. But basically, once you've done that, the more tax you pay, the happier you are because that means the more profit you're making, right? You know, if, if you came to me and said, gee, Raph, I'm so annoyed my tax bill was $250,000 this year, I'd be like, Frick, how much profit did you make, <laughs> right? <laughs> You'd be crying all the way to the bank. Um, all right, so your cost of sales is basically your instructor, right? And then you've got your fixed costs, which are not different if you run the class or if you don't run the class, right? So you've got things like the rent for the space or the lease. Oh, sorry, the mortgage for the place if you own it. Okay. You got insurance. You got your website. You got your bookkeeper. You know, just whatever th- things you pay on the weekly or monthly, quarterly basis that, um, yeah, Calendly, you know, Mind Body Online, or whatever booking system you use. You know, all of that, you know, phone, all of that stuff, right? So all of that, if you ran zero classes per week, you'd still have to pay those bills, right? If you took two weeks off and didn't run any classes, you still have to pay for all those things. So they're fixed costs. And if you doubled the number of classes that you ran, well, your rent wouldn't go up. Your mind body fees wouldn't go up. You you know, your phone bill wouldn't really go up. The website wouldn't be more expensive. So those costs are fixed, right? Does that kind does that distinction make sense to to you? Do you have any questions about that distinction? Fixed costs versus, you know, sometimes they call this variable costs as well is another name for it. All means the same thing, right? Variable costs, cost of sales, cost of goods sold, all means the same thing. Just costs that go up and down depending on how much you sell. Whereas then your fixed costs are fixed. They don't go up and down. All right. So we know, again, I'm just making these numbers up, right? Cherie hasn't told me these actual numbers, but I did a quick search on realestate.com.au and looked for commercial properties, uh, retail properties on the high street in Mansfield. And my best guess is that, uh, uh, you know, if I wanted to open a studio there at about 250 square meters, I'd be paying about 40K per year in rent, okay, for the premises, which works out to, and I've worked it out before, it's about 833 per week, right? I don't know how close I am to your actual number there, Cherie, but it doesn't matter. Let's just use this for indicative purposes. Um, And then we've got insurance, blah, 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 right? And so, again, I'm just going to totally guesstimate (laughs) these numbers, but I'm going to guess, right, so that's 833 a week times 4.33 weeks because there's 4.33 weeks in a month, right, is about 3,600 a month right? Because you normally pay rent monthly, right? Every first of the month or whatever, they want you to pay the rent. So there's, it's going to be, the bill's going to be roughly that. Plus then you've got to pay, you know, outgoings like garbage collection and all of that stuff. So I'm going to say, okay, if your, if your rent is about 3,600 a month, and then you've got all of this stuff, you know, let's say that your, all of your total expenses might be what? 6,000 a month. Does that, you know, you studio owners in the room, does that sound about right? Am I too low? Am I too high? You tell me. I'm out of the game. I'm out of the studio game a few years now. So I guess it depends if you have reception. Do you have reception? I do, but. um, Well, then then your costs go right up, don't they? Yeah. That that was my next question. Do you need to have reception? But let's leave it apart for now. All right. All right. So let's say you don't have reception. And the instructor signs people in and, you know, tidies up the room after the class and whatever. Does that sound about right or not? Yeah, Thumbs you're right, Raph. Yep. That's, what, that's roughly what we are. Okay, great. Yep. Was, that, was that you, Cherie? Yep. Awesome. Haven't lost it. No. Nah. Um, okay. So, all right. So, if you, you're about $6,000 per month. Well, you've got to, you've got to come up with $6,000 every month just to keep the lights on. Right, just to just to stop the the bank coming in and foreclosing on the mortgage or the real estate putting a you know closed sign on the front door or whatever. Okay, so six thousand a month. All right, now we've got it. Here's our class. We're making one hundred sixty six dollars. Right, but that's before we pay the instructor. 
right? So then how much are we paying the instructor? Now, again, I, d- I don't know how much she repays the instructors and I don't want to know, but I, so I'm just going to make up a number, right? But let's say it's $50, right? Say $50 for the instructor, right? I don't know if that's a bit more or a bit less than what you pay, but let's say it's roughly about the same. All right, so that leaves us $116, okay, out of that class. And that would be what we would call our gross profit, which is not the same thing as profit, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's the profit before you pay your fixed costs, right? So we've got $116 per class, gross profit, right? And we've got to pay six thousand dollars a month is this making sense so far right so if we go okay six thousand dollars okay divided by 116 dollars right equals we've got to run 52 classes a month okay 52 full classes a month okay 52 classes equals Break even. Does that make sense to you guys? Right. So if we run 52 classes each with an average of 6.4 people in them, and those people are paying an average of $26 per class, okay, and we're paying our instructor $50 and our expenses is $6,000, fixed cost is $6,000, okay, the money that went into our bank account and the money that came out of our bank account is the exact same amount right? The, the starting bank balance is zero. The ending bank balance is zero, right? So, so far we haven't put any profit in. <laughs> okay. But all right. So is, is Sheree running 52 classes a month? Well, yeah, she's running 22 reformer classes a week, right? So she's running what, like 90 something classes a month, right? So according, you know, now I, again, I don't know how full those classes are, but let's go 22 times 4.33 equals 95, right? 95 classes a month. So if Cherie's filling those 95 classes. Well, what's she doing? 95 times 116 is $11,050. Okay. Minus her $6,000 in um, fixed costs leaves her with $5,050. And that's profit. That's actual profit. Right, that's pre-tax profit. You've got to pay tax on that, obviously. Now that that's just, that's not Cherie paying herself a wage. Right. So if because if Cherie was the instructor on one of those classes, well, she got $50 or whatever amount she's paying herself for it. Right. So if she gets paid additional, you know, for whatever she teaches, but then the the money left over at the end of the month, that's profit, that's hers as the owner. All right. Now, so five thousand dollars a month times 12 months, but you're not going to have make that every month because then you've got Christmas and then you've got New Year's and then you've got Easter and then you've got all of that stuff, okay? So it ends up being like 11 months, right? So 511s is $55,000 a year profit, you know, on top of what you get for teaching. Well, you know, that's better than a poke in the eye with a blunt stick, okay? But it's not freaking awesome. I can retire in three years. Amazing. So, um. Now we haven't even counted the 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 small groups and the duets yet, and that this, this is where I want to get to that. So, but just before we move on, does this all make sense? Do you guys have any questions about this so far? Just checking. So, when you say six thousand dollars a month of fixed cost, that included the rain, the rent of three thousand six hundred. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And this is just a you know this is just a best guess, right? I'm just thinking yeah. like okay. Back in the day when I remember running a business like a party studio, rent was a bit more than half of my fixed costs, you know, so I just kind of rounded it, rounded it up. Sorry, can um, I just ask a question, Raph? Yeah. On those fixed costs, the jump from 3600 to 6000 seems quite a lot. Are you assuming in that jump that a good portion of that is by paid wages rather than Sherry doing it herself? Uh, no. So I'm assuming that is stuff like, um, yeah, mind body fees. Last time I checked, that was like pretty darn expensive. Um, you know, website hosting, someone to do your bookkeeping, um, insurance, um, you know, 
just sundry expenses, you know, someone to do the cleaning, all of that stuff. Um, there might be uh, lease payments on your Pilates equipment. Um, yeah, all of that. Now, if Cherie gets someone to teach a class for her, well, that's already covered as the $50 that we've allowed as variable costs, right? Mm-hmm. So this, these figures are the same regardless of whether it's Cherie teaching or someone else teaching. And that's, that's how we have to think as business owners because if, if you're just getting paid for the classes that you teach, well, that's not a business, that's a job, right? So as a business owner, yes, you should get paid for the classes that you teach and you should get the profit as well, right? There should be profit left over and you should get the profit because you've taken all this risk. You know, you've put your mortgage on the line for your home, presumably, okay? You're staying up late at night you know, worrying about it, like you're, you're taking a risk. And so you get the reward, right? And the reward is the profit at the end. But that's not getting paid for teaching classes. Getting paid for teaching classes is just whoever teaches the class gets paid for it, whether that's you or someone else. I'm not sure if I answered your question, but I hope so. Um, all right. So if we want to, you know, if we want to, in so, on the face of it, now, again, I don't know how full these classes are, but I notice a fair few of them have wait lists, which is awesome. So Cherie's obviously doing a lot of things right, right? And I look at that website and I see that that's been thought about, you know, and someone's, it's a website designed to uh, guide the prospective client to become an actual client, right? That's the purpose of the website. And I, I reckon it probably does that pretty well based on the design. You know, it's got a big clickable button to start here and all the prices are there and you can book online all that stuff. So I reckon that's that's really doing its job pretty well. And my guess is Cherie's got a sustainable business, okay? Again, not having been privy to any of her numbers, I'm just looking at this from the outside. But my guess is she's doing all right, right? But she's not doing spectacularly. She's not like, woohoo, <laughs> that would told me Pilates could be so lucrative, <laughs> okay? Now, if we wanted to, you know, if I came in and it was my business and I wanted to double or quadruple the profit. Okay. Here's what I would do. Well, if we look at the, we said $116 in gross profit for a, a, a group reformer class, right? Well, let's, let's go back to that and let's think about it for a, well, let's, let's think about this now again, Sheree, I, I don't know whether this is physically possible or not, but here's the, here's what I would be thinking, right? Why only eight? Right. I mean, if you had nine reformers, right, it would be instead of 6.4 people in your class, it would be 7.2 people in your class, right, times 26, times 22 classes a week, okay, times 4.33 class, uh, weeks a month, right? So you would get that additional, basically – pretty close to an extra $26 per class, right? So your your revenue per class after paying the instructor will go from 116 to something like 130-ish. No, 140-ish, sorry. Right, just by adding an extra reformer, right? And all of that extra money would be profit, right? Because you've already paid all your fixed costs, you've already paid all your variable costs, right? But if you went up to nine, why stop at nine, Right. What if you went to 14 reformers? Now, why do I say 14? It's because I used to have a studio that had, uh, we had two studios. One had 18, one had 20. Okay. I've worked at studios with 22, 24, and 26 reformers in the room. I know Virgin Australia have 24, 25, and 26 in a lot of their studios. Uh, and I also know that most, that KX Pilates started out with 10 in the room but they've moved over the years to a model of 14 in the room. And here's why they moved to 14, right? And so uh, I guess what I'm saying is I reckon at the difference between eight and 20 is a noticeable drop in the amount of personalized attention that each person gets, right? But I reckon the difference between eight and 14 is not very noticeable to the customer in terms of how much personal attention they receive. Okay. Now that might be a controversial statement and we can, have a discussion about it some other time if you want, but um, I don't think any of you would 
be able to argue successfully that KX is not a good business model. Okay. So um, in terms of their business model, this is why it works, right? 14 reformers <laughs> times $26, right? Times 0.8, right? Let's do the math. 14 times 26 times 0.8 equals $291 per class minus $50 for the instructor, okay, is $241, right? So now we've gone from $116 per class gross profit to $241 per class gross profit, more than double, right? We didn't more than double the number of reformers, right? But we more than doubled our gross profit, right? And now at 22 classes, that equals 6,000, does it? Oh, yeah, 6,404 times 4.33 equals 27,740, close enough, okay? Now, remember before it was 11,000, the monthly revenue? Okay, now minus a fixed cost of 6,000 is 21,740. Okay, so we've gone by adding six more reformers, we've gone from $5,000 a month profit to $21,700 a month profit, right? More than quadruple, right? We haven't changed our prices. We haven't changed the number of classes that we're running. We haven't changed any of our expenses. Or we've, well, actually, we have increased our fixed cost a little bit because we've taken up uh, more real estate and we've uh, probably incurred a lease expense on those reformers, but it's going to be negligible compared to how much extra revenue you get. Um, and Jordana says, uh, reformers take up huge real estate, so we can assume she needs a bigger space, right? Um my guess just looking at the website is you're probably, and again, you know, I don't know the dimensions of the space or anything, but I'm just going by what I see on the website. Um, my guess is probably a bit of both, right? When I look at this space, I reckon, I, I don't know, but I reckon you could probably squeeze another two in there, okay, if your life depended on it, if you offset them if you went in there and played Tetris and put them sideways and, you know, put them closer together end to end or think, you know, rethought your options about would you be doing leg circles every class and things like that. Okay. If, if we said that the difference between getting them in and not getting them in is, you know, quadrupling, more than quadrupling your profit, <laughs> you know, you might find the motivation to squeeze in a couple more. I'm not sure. I can't, you know, obviously we can't see the whole room, but I'd be like, okay, can we remove every plant, shelf, book, you know, bookcase, box of tissues, you know, scrape a layer of paint off the walls to make it slightly bigger? Like, how can we get more reformers in that room, right? How close can we get them without people tripping over them every single time they, they walk into the room? Um, so that would be my thought process. Um, you know, can we get the boxes stored outside or hung on the wall or something somewhere where they don't take up floor space? You know, can we put the fitness circle somewhere else? Can we, how can we just have as many reforms as possible in that room? And if, if you can't, the next thing I would think is like, well, can you knock down a wall? Okay. What wall can you knock down? <laughs> you know, could you widen the doorway? Like how, how can you get more reformers in the room would be like, that would be the, the question I would be you know, waking up in the middle of the night thinking about. Um, all right, so, so, and I don't know if there, you know, what the solution is there. That's for, for Sheree to ponder on and, and think about and for each of you as well. But, but I guess the big takeaway message that I hope you get is the difference between eight reformers and 14 reformers is not 60% more revenue. It's more and more than four times the profit right? So if you put 60% more reformers in, you don't get 60% more profit, you get 450% more profit, right? Because all of the extra stuff is profit because you already paid all your costs, right? You're still paying the instructor the same amount, still paying the same rent, still paying the same amount for my body, all of that stuff the same. It's just extra money in your pocket, right? So that's, the, that's a big one. 
The next one is, all right, well, if we look at the timetable, right, the schedule, I see a lot of these are small groups here. A lot of them are small groups, okay? Duets, small group, duet, small group, duet, okay? So this, you know, you've got 22 reformer and then nine and eight, so 17 duet slash small group sessions, right? So it's almost half and half, right? Well, what if all of those were reformer, right, is my next question. And, and you know, I've been through... I've been through, you know, this dilemma uh, in studios that I own because we had small groups, we had one-on-ones, we had yoga. Yoga was never an earner for us because people want to come for 90 minutes, right, which is double the length. And the instructor wants double the pay, but the clients don't want to pay twice as much. In fact, they want to pay less. <laughs> so yoga was always, we're, every every month we we're like, oh, should we get rid of yoga? And then every month we we're like, no, but we love yoga. And then we're like, ah, oh, but we could think how much money we could make if we put reformers in that room instead. So that was a discussion we had basically every month for 10 years and we never, we never pulled the trigger on it. But in hindsight, you know, I, I would pull that trigger. And so I think, you know, maybe again, Cherie, I, I have no insight into your thought process or why you've got small groups or any of that. And I, you know, I, I've taught a lot of small groups and I love teaching small groups and uh, I know that clients love them, but they're just not profitable, right? Not like a, not like a reformer class is. So I would be thinking like, okay, how do I make all of those maximize the profit in all of those spots on the timetable? Okay. We'll either turn them all into group reformer classes or I start charging more for my small groups, right? Um, and you just got to think about from a perspective of, what would it be, pro- you know, what would it be profitable for me to charge, right, for a small group? And that's how much do you charge? And there'll be people who find the money because I think you've shown that your reformer prices are very comparable to big city prices and people don't seem to have a problem paying it. Um, but I think you're undercharging for the small groups, in my view. I would put it up to $60 or $55 or something like that, like a bit less than a one-on-one, basically. Um, uh, or... Increase the capacity of the small group, bring it up to five people would be another option or six people. Um, and, you know, people will get used to it. And I think you can provide fine personal attention in a group of six as well. So those, you know, those are options I'd be thinking like, how can I maximize my revenue in those timetable spots where you currently have small groups, whether that would be increasing the price of the small group per person, increasing the number of people in the small group, or just swapping them out for a group reformer class um, or some combination, right? It could be some of one, some of the other. Uh, And then it comes to the duets. And I think like uh, basically the duets, they're they're $98 in revenue, right? Because they're, what are they, $55 or something per person. So it's $110 in revenue. Your fixed costs and your variable costs are the same, right? So now you're you're charging $110, you're paying $50 for instructor, but you're not going to have 100% occupancy in your duets, right? Because people still get sick and the kids have to go to the dentist and stuff. So let's say again, 0.8, right? So $110 times 0.8, 110 times 0.8, 88 dollars, right? You pay fifty dollars for your instructor, you got thirty-eight dollars gross profit for that class, right? You have to run a heck of a lot of those to make you six thousand dollars a month in fixed costs, right? Compare that to the group reformer class with 14 reformers of $241 gross profit. It's almost 10 times the gross profit per class, right? So put another way, every time you run a duet instead of a group reformer class with 14 beds in it, you lose $190. You know, you leave $190 on the table. So the only time I would say to run duets is if you've maximized all the times in your timetable when people will come to reformer, Okay. And then you've got people knocking on your door going, gee, I want to come at some weird time, like three in the afternoon or, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, then do it, do duets because they're just cream, right? They're additional to the reformer, but I would never do them instead of reformer because it's just not a high value activity for the business, you know, Um, unless you can do them in a different room. But if you've got a different room, put more reformers in it, you know? (laughs) Um, So I guess, yes. And I would increase the, 
charge for the duet as well. Um, but so basically, add more reformers, all right? Run more reformer classes, probably at the expense of small groups and duets, right? The other thing is you can actually probably just restructure your schedule a bit to, without getting rid of any reformers or uh, duets or, or whatever and just run more reformer classes. So if we look at this again, right? Um, the here's, here's good Thursday morning. Okay. We've got a 6 15 a.m. class, it goes for 40 minutes, okay, till 7 05 a.m. Okay. Then we've got a 7 15 a.m. class, it goes to 8 05, and a 9 15 a.m. class, it goes to 10 05. Right. So presumably, this is your peak hour here, right? This is before work, right? These are the early risers that come in before work. So there's a 6 15 a.m. and a 7 15 a.m. They're finished by 8 05 a.m. They can still get to go have a shower, get to work, easy peasy, right? But what if instead of that, you ran a 6 15 a.m. that just went for 45 minutes? Oh, sorry, that goes for 50 minutes. My apologies. So what if we cut five minutes off every class, okay, down to 45 minutes, so 6 15 till 7? Six fifteen to seven, and then no change over time. Seven to seven forty-five, and then seven forty-five to eight thirty. And that way, you get in three classes in the same time that you would have got in two classes. And I'm still finished by eight thirty. I can still get to work on time because Mansfield's only got four thousand nine hundred people, so you can walk from one end of town to the other in half an hour. Right, so I increase my number of classes. It's it's up to it's one hundred and fifty percent of what I was running before. Right, I'm running fifty percent more classes. Right, which means fifty percent more times one hundred and sixteen dollars. Whoops, one hundred and sixteen dollars, because that's our gross profit per reformer class. Right. So if we now we're going from what did we say it was eleven thousand dollars gross, uh, like you know gross profit for the month when we ran reformer classes with with eight people in them. Well, now we're going up to $16,500 just by doing this, right? And that's profit. That's, and so our profit goes from minus $6,000 goes to $5,000, right? To $10,000. So we double our profit. Um, by, right. By just doing if this. If to 45 minutes, would you make the client pay the same as when? Oh, Yeah. And what about the instructor? Do you pay the instructor the same? Yeah, I'll pay the instructor the same. So that way you, I mean, so they, I mean, there's, and there's no reason you can't do all of these things, right? You could put more reformers in the room, replace the, some of the duets with reformer classes, increase the duet and small group prices, add two more people to your small groups, cut like all the classes down to 45 minutes and run them back to back. Right. And if you, if you did all of those things, I reckon, I mean, I haven't done the math, but I reckon you could 10 times your profit on that studio. All right. I'm sorry. I've gone on for ages. It's we're at an hour, but I would love if you've got questions, I'm, I'm happy to stick around if you want to discuss any of this. Um, yeah. That, that's basically all I had to say. <laughs> What are your thoughts? Um, when when do you stop going for profit and then spending a bit more time with your client? Like if you go back to back, you have absolutely no time to discuss with your client and send them away or rebook your clients and, you know, just that attention. Like really if you go 45 minutes and then straight on, they barely have time to clean up their reformers. Um, I just feel like then it's just too much. Like you've increased to 14. Um, so where do you stop? <laughs> um, well, uh, we ran. I ran a successful business for 10 years that had that model. Yeah. Okay. And we had about 1,400, 1,500 client attendances per week um, by the end when, when I sold the business. So customers didn't seem to have a problem with it. You definitely have to be on point with your you know, start and finish times. And the instructors have to be really good with getting the clients to clean their reformers, put the straps back on, all of that, and then out the door. Like that has to be the discipline. There's nothing to say that has to be the same instructor teaching those three classes in a row, right? 
Mm. It could be you teaching the first class and I'm in your class and then we walk out together and you can talk to me and then maybe Amanda's teaching the second class and she walks in, right? So we can still preserve that. The other thing is that I would say, well, if you don't have to take all of that extra profitability as money, right? So you could choose instead of, you know, quadrupling your profits, you could choose to double your profits and work less, right? So if you put six more reformers in the room and teach five classes a week less, you probably still make more money, <laughs> right? And so that way you've got more time, you'll be at home, you know, curating your messaging to the clients and ringing up clients and seeing how their kids are and, you know, like you have more time. You'll be able to spend more time planning your classes, more time, all of this stuff, you know, tidying the studio, putting in your aromatherapy, all of that stuff. Right. So you can, you can trade off some of that or you've got all this freaking money. Now you can pay someone to do the aromatherapy. You can pay someone to, you know, message the, the clients and, and all of that. Right. You, you, money can, can buy all of those things because money can buy time. Raph, I actually added more space between the classes because of COVID restrictions, but um. It's a really good point and it's been such a valuable morning. I totally went away from doing one-on-ones, one-on-twos because it's so disappointing when people cancel at the last minute. So the way that I've ended up working it here, which is, you know, reasonably successful, is I manage it by time. So the classes that are fuller get a 50-minute class and then the rehabby classes get 40 minutes and then if someone is desperate for a one-on-one, -on -one, they get half an hour, but it's all the same price for that time block. Awesome. And right. um, I'm just going to put a little plug in for Breathe. I've got two really awesome instructors now. Thank you. Oh, thank you for being such an advocate and, and part of our network and part of our community. Anyone else got anything you'd like to add, you know, comments, perspectives, questions? Yeah, Raf, hi. Um, Cherie here. Thanks for um, analysing my business and my website and all your comments. Um, really appreciate it. And it's interesting because we've just, um, what you're looking at is the old studio. In mm. um, April we have moved into our new building, so we've built a brand-new studio. We had some real estate in town. Um, and we've done a really amazing building here and we've got heaps and heaps of space. So um, we're a step ahead and um, right there with you, we've not quite um, added up to 14 reformers, but the problem um, that we are building um, up our number of reformers and space, I've cut back duets for those reasons that you've talked about. I run small groups alongside my reformer classes now, so two classes can run at the same time. Um, my workload was out of control just because of um, having a, just a bit of a hard time finding teachers um, in a regional town. So I've just really had to um, look at how to reduce my teaching hours. So that's why we've sort of just needed to add the space and go down that line. So it's um, your point about actually working less um, for more profits really important because we just can't... Um, you know, I couldn't teach, continue to teach the 40 classes a week that I was doing. So um, even though we've had to spend a lot of money building the studio and everything, um, what we've been able to do is actually hopefully cut back my numbers by having more people in our classes. So, um, yeah, we're right there with what you're advocating and um, it's working. So slowly, slowly getting there. That's awesome, Sheree. I'm so happy to hear that. And And on that point, right, I mean, that's what I'm doing here with you guys here today, right? This is a free session I'm giving you for nothing, right? I'm not trying to sell you anything. There's nothing for sale, right? I can afford to do that because I have a profitable business, right? And I don't have to be slaving with my nose to the grindstone, you know, seven days a week to, to service clients because I have a team who does that incredibly well. And because of that profit, I've got time and leisure to think, oh, how can I contribute back to the community? And, how, you know, and, and that's the luxury that you get when you have that profit because money can buy time. 
Is there um, so mat work classes? Is there is it worth running mat work classes alongside and offering that um, options to our new clients, or is it just reformer? I, I think so, um, but I think it's going to be probably uh, region specific. So in our in our studio, we always ran mat classes, but they just got fewer and fewer on the timetable because they were just were poorly attended. They were taught by the same instructors at the same time slots, and just people would prefer the reformer right so but but you'll have to but we were in melbourne cbd and it was 2015 and now it's 2021 and you're in sydney are you in sydney no i'm in, in tonga in new zealand in, actually. that's right new, new zealand you know so so it's a different time it's a different place you'll have to experiment with it in your location um uh, the beautiful thing about Matt Pilates is you can put more bodies in the room, right? Because you're not limited by how many reformers you've got. Mats cost $50, reformers cost $4,000. So it's much easier to put 30 mats in a room <laughs> if you've got a big enough room. Um, so that's, a, you know, in my experience, you can't charge the same for Matt Pilates that you can charge for reformer Pilates. People will pay, it's more like yoga. They'll pay you know, more like $20 a class sort of thing. Um, but you can fit more people in the class. So yeah, you just have to experiment with it. I think. Does anyone else? How you know? A lot of you guys own studios. Do you run? Anyone run successful mat classes? Well, that's, Raph, that's sorry. I, I was. I don't own a studio. Um, I'm kind of. I've. I'm leaving my corporate job later in the year and I'm setting stuff up. But I'm going to also continue to work in the studios I work in, and I do work in one studio that actually runs classes concurrently. So they've got the space to have mat going and reformer going and a circuit or a quartet or whatever going um, simultaneously. And, yeah, I would say, like, even if there's a wait list on the reformer class, you can still have your mat class half full and even the quartet quite often only, like, two or three of the four spaces taken up. So there's just definitely something that, like, the reformer does to people. <laughs> they just really have that appetite for that compared to other things and and a lot of you guys on the call right that was your experience with pilates that was my experience with pilates like you on the get on the reform one time you're like holy shit this is amazing yeah right i mean it just has that effect on people and so yeah i just think well as a as the fundamental the fundamental kind of job of a business is to provide value to people you know think you know what the people consider to be valuable right like what they consider to be valuable, not what we consider to be valuable. So if they, you know, if you've got people lining up around the corner for reformer classes, I would say put your thinking cap on and figure out how you can service more people for reformer classes rather than trying to, you know, create demand for MAC classes. I think, you know, a little pet peeve of mine is the, 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 the sometimes people do uh, try and think, oh, how can we get more men into Pilates? And I think like, well, you know, I'm a man, I do Pilates, so I'm I'm I've got no problem with men doing Pilates, <laughs> but but I think well why like women freaking love Pilates, <laughs> why not just say hey women here's Pilates great you know if men want to come you're welcome right but women already want to buy it so why not sell it to them you know rather than trying to sell it to men who don't who aren't that interested except when their girlfriends or wives drag them along you know and then they come for two classes and never come back you know it's like why try and sell it to them they don't want it. <laughs> Sell, sell it to the people who want it. Sorry, that was that was just a soapbox moment. Just going back to reception, does anyone have reception and think it's really valuable? Fanny, what's your thoughts? You've got reception. I'll ask a question. <laughs> oh, that, oh, sorry. Um, does anyone else have a receptionist? So um, I guess there, there's there's an important part of your answer, right? If all of these other businesses get by without a receptionist, um, you probably can too. Um, we always had reception at the studio where I that I owned, but we were huge. I mean, we had like we had three studios in the same building and – you know, classes running from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. can basically continuously, you know, five and a half days a week. And so so we had reception, um, but that was a huge expense reception, you know, for us, 
and, and, and it, it takes up space, like physical space in the building. And it takes up um, money, right? You have to pay your receptionist. You have to buy computers for them and all of that stuff. So uh, if I had my time over, I would probably say I love the KX model, you know, which most of you are now doing, right? It's like 14 reformers in a room with a computer somewhere squashed into the corner where you can, you know, sign people in and a sound system. And that way, basically, every square meter of floor space, you're putting as many reformers on it as possible, right? And the more space you put in for like lounge suites and reception desks and change rooms, it's like, well, that's non-revenue generating floor space, right? And, and I'm all for having a communal space where people can connect before class and all of that stuff. But, you know, I guess, uh, you know, reception is not a revenue generator. Um, you might, as someone said in the chat, actually, you can get a personal assistant, right? You can get a virtual assistant, someone on Upwork, right? $10 an hour, $12 an hour. And you can get them to do all the things that a, a receptionist would normally do, like, you know, calling up people to confirm their sessions, um, you know, renewing people's packs over the phone, so problem solving people's troubles, logging into the mind body app, you know, all of that stuff that a receptionist would normally do an admin would normally do. You can get someone virtual to do it for less money per hour and also less floor space in your studio. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, uh, I'm, I apologize if, if there, you put something in the chat that I didn't see. There was just heaps going on in there. Um, if, if you've put anything in there that I haven't responded to, um, I would be appreciative if you would post it in, in the Facebook group or in Slack, if you're on Slack with me, um, and I'll, I'll answer to it. The only reason I haven't answered is just because I haven't seen it. So um, thanks very much. And uh, I hope you found this valuable. And uh, I'd love to hear your, you know, what, you know what your key takeaways were in the in the Facebook group. Just type it as a comment um, or any further questions you've got. So yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Raf. Thank you. Thanks, Raf.